Australia is known for being the centre of all types of dangerous creatures, particularly being the home to all sorts of reptiles. But what if I told you if we jumped back some thousands of years ago, the ecosystem becomes far more interesting, especially when we look at the lizard that was the size of a saltwater crocodile. Good day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host and today's video will be a case study on the largest lizard to ever exist. Widely known as Megalania, scientifically known as Varanus priscus, informally known as the ancient great Roma. Let's start off with how this great lizard came to be. Origins and Evolution Megalania, the colossal monitor lizard, emerged as a descendant of Varanids during the early Cretaceous epoch, believed to have its origins in Asia. The evolutionary journey of Megalania likely involved a migration to Australia, facilitated by land bridges connecting the continents during the time. As part of the Varanid family, Megalania would have undergone adaptions over millions of years, diversifying to thrive in various environments encountered along its migration route and upon its arrival in Australia. While specific details of Megalania's evolutionary path remains elusive due to limited fossil evidence, its impressive size and unique anatomical features suggest a successful adaption to prehistoric ecosystems. The scarcity of complete Megalania fossils adds to the mystery surrounding its evolutionary history, leaving researchers to rely on discoveries scattered across eastern Australia to piece its story together. Despite these many challenges, Megalania's evolutionary significance is undeniable. As for its closest descendants today, it shouldn't be surprised that its closest to those in the Varanus genus. This would include the Australian Parenti, the Lace Monina, and of course, the Komodo Dragon. So what are some of the physical attributes this lizard evolved? Physical Attributes So of course with the title of Largest Lizard, you'd hope Megalania lived up to the hype, and it surely did. Megalania, the largest lizard known to exist, ranged from 3 to 7 metres in length, although estimates of 7 metres are considered to be a bit less reliable. According to a 2009 study by Stephen Rowe, Megalania would have grown between 3 to 5.5 metres, and the Australian Museum suggests that 4.8 metres is a solid average. As for weights, again, it depends on which source you use, or if you use a certain lizard to scale it up. The most extreme weights place this lizard at around 1,941 kilograms, basically 2 tonnes. But before anyone goes ahead and thinks, hey, this is the case for sure, well, it likely isn't, as the latest studies have revised these weights and minimised it to just over a ton. More reliable estimates place its average weight between 322 to 575 kilograms, so clearly it's a hefty lizard, placing it at the same size as saltwater crocodiles, the largest reptile of today. The massive size discrepancy isn't surprising though, as looking at Komodo dragons, we can see that they can have up to a 400% mass variance between mature adults. So who knows, maybe a two ton lizard is still on the cards. As for speed, well, these lizards weren't anything exceptional. According to CJ Clementi et al. study on evolutionary relationships of sprint speeds in Australian varanid lizards, it seems that they would have been able to move around 9.4 to 10.8 kilometers an hour. As for bite force, again, it depends on what lizard you used. Bringing up Stephen Rowe again, who used a Komodo dragon for a basic understanding, he seems that it had a decent bite force. Measuring from a Komodo dragon and then scaling its anterior bite as well as posterior bite, it seems that the Megalania's anterior bite force would be 747 newtons and its posterior bite force would be around 1,500 newtons. They also had sharp and curved blade-like teeth to back it up. These teeth would ensure the Megalania would have a solid grip onto its prey, and if they would try to escape, then heavy serrations would follow. But of course, it's not just a bite that you'd have to be worried about. There is a high chance that the Megalania may have had a venomous bite, the same as Komodo dragons. The toxins found in these lizards have been identified as hemotoxin. This substance functions as an anticoagulant, intensifying the bleeding from prey injuries significantly. Consequently, it swiftly lowers the prey's blood pressure, inducing systematic shock. So we're right, clearly this lizard was kitted out. What type of environment did it live in? Distribution and habitat. Megalania inhabited a wide array of Pleistocene environments, encompassing open forest, woodlands, and possibly even grasslands. Its fossils have been discovered in various settings such as streams and river deposits as well as caves. It was scarce in all these places and likely didn't directly reside on riverbanks or within these caves. Megalania was extensively distributed throughout much of eastern Australia, as well as places in the north. 
There have been more found at Rockhampton along the south coast. Megalania has also been found in New South Wales as well as South Australia. Clearly, it inhabited a wide space throughout Australia. Although Megalania has not yet been documented in Tasmania, Western Australia or New Guinea. But again, it's difficult to say for sure as their fossil remains are already very fragmentary. So there is a good chance that they may have inhabited these regions. But throughout their environment, what did these oversized goannas hunt? Hunting. As Australia's head apex predator, Megalania was more or less capable of hunting nearly any prey item that he could catch. However, its size alone wouldn't make it unstoppable, as it had to deal with some dangerous prey items that could even outsize themselves. As for its overall hunting strategy, I think like with most predators, especially for one its size and lack of speed, the tactic of an ambush attack would have been highly effective. Its lower build to the ground may have meant it could hide in the brush, which would in turn make it easier for it to get closer to its prey before executing its attack. These prior items would include the giant Diprotodon, which we can basically say is a 2.8 ton wombat that could have reached over 3 meters from head to tail. This would have been among the most dangerous prey items for a Megalania to try to take down due to its sheer size and power. For something like this, I could very well see a Komodo dragon style of hunting, where they would ambush this giant, get in some good bites before they would move away and then allow for their venom to do the job. This is simply because Diprotodon is too big for a Megalania to take down in one attack. It also lacks the agility of big cats to jump around getting the right angle around the neck So again, this tactic seems much more effective We also have the largest kangaroo the Procoptodon which grew around 2.7 meters tall and weighed over 200 kilograms Its lighter weight compared to some other megafauna would mean that it would move faster and have a greater agility Compared to some others, but its larger size meant that there would be more pressure being exerted and put on itself If it tried to traverse like a modern kangaroo still with its lighter weight and overall design if a Megalania failed its ambush, it's likely that Kangaroo Jack would have escaped. So this could be a mix of two strategies, either it was successful in taking it down in one go, or if it landed a bite, it could allow its venom to do the work and catch up to it later. We also have the Geniornis. And for those of you asking what in the world is that, well my dear viewer, it's a bird that weighed around 220 to 260 kilograms. That is double that of the largest bird known today, the ostrich. It could have also grown over 2 meters tall, making them giants in their own right. But that pales in comparison to the Dromonus, which was a bird double the size of the previously mentioned, weighing around 450 to 650 kilograms and stood at an imposing height of 3 meters. To be honest, I see this as an interesting matchup, as Megalania could take them down through biting their legs, but then again, the bird's greater height could mean that it could spot the lizard and then escape before even being bitten. So these are the main and most known prey options for the Megalania. But don't get me wrong, there are many types of subfamilies of Diprotodonte and other birds that the Megalania would have also eaten. Also, there's the extinct as well as current koalas, echidnas, kangaroos, as well as other reptiles which were around. And if the Komodos are anything to go off, then the Megalanias would have likely eaten juveniles of their own species. So clearly there was a variety when it came to food. But what competitors did Megalania have to deal with? Competitors. Now, it may have been one of the apex predators of Australia, but that doesn't mean it was the only one. This lizard coexisted with a couple of large predators, the most famous of which is known as Thiokaleo, also known as the Pouch Lion. This marsupial measured 30 inches at the shoulder and 59 inches in length. Their higher weight estimates would place it at around 165 kilograms. I mean, side by side, it's obvious that there is a massive disparity and an adult Megalania would undoubtedly demolish the Pouch Lion Definitely not something most Ark players would have thought. The massive size gap would mean that this marsupial could really only win from a surprise attack possibly off a tree or against juvenile Megalanias. However, this doesn't mean that Megalania would have been a more successful predator, but rather just more successful when it came to predator on predator combat. But there is a bit of a better rival for our giant lizard, this being the semi-aquatic crocodilian known as Quincana. These crocs, same with the Megalania, had a bit of a size range, which is still heavily disputed. But to play devil's advocate, it seems that they could have grown around 3 to 6 meters in length and a weight of 200 to 450 kilograms. If these two got into a bit of a spat, well then it would certainly be close. However, if they were around the same size and it was on land, I'd have to give it to the Megalania. But if it was in the water, then I think our crocodilian could take it. Still though, these two would have left each other alone as much as possible as they were both large apex reptiles. However, the crocodilian would have likely resided around the water even if it wasn't fully aquatic, while the Megalania may have stayed more around the inland areas. 
There is also the chance that our lizard may have competed with the Wanambi, which was a snake that could have reached around 4 to 6 meters in length and a weight of around 50 kilograms. Personally, I feel like this would have been a lesser competitor, likely inhabited water regions, but if they did engage in a conflict, I'd say that the Megalania would have predated on this snake due to the sheer weight difference. And we can't forget about other Megalanias. These would have been one of the biggest competitors which could have been exponentially made more intense if they did in fact engage with, well, eating each other. And of course, when it came to later in time, humans were the biggest competitor that they simply couldn't compete with. But we'll get into detail on them soon. So it does seem that Megalania would have been the most dominant predator amongst the entirety of Australia prior to humans' arrival. Its size meant it could overpower most competitors, which could mean that scavenging off another predator's food may have often occurred. But despite these formidable attributes, ultimately faced extinction. But what factors contributed to its demise? Extinction. As with most extinct animals from the prehistoric past, we don't know exactly what caused the Megalania to go extinct. A study comparing the morphology of closely related extant varanid lizards to Megalania concluded that the musculature and physical characteristics of Megalania would have made it inefficient in evading early human settlers. There are a number of articles pointing to humans as a big reason for Australia's loss of megafauna, including the Megalania. However, I'm not about to point humans as the only reason for our favourite lizard's extinction. I mean, humans had first come to Australia around 65,000 years ago, possibly even further back, and Megalania was dated to go extinct around 40,000 years ago, which does suggest that they did coexist with humans for thousands of years. Instead, changing climate would have undoubtedly affected all organisms, especially the larger megafauna. Really, it's always the mix of two factors when it comes to an animal's extinction once we've entered the picture. Us, and climate change. Though it can be pinpointed to once the larger prey items went extinct for Megalania, it was at a disadvantage, as it was now too bulky to catch the smaller red kangaroo or emus. Whichever way it went extinct, it seems that climate and humans would have been involved in one way or another. But it's hard to pinpoint if one was more than the other, as it seems that every other year, an article comes out suggesting one was more important than the other. And with that, everybody's favourite giant lizard became extinct. And quickly, just before the curtains roll, I have seen a couple comments saying to address this, but yeah, some people believe the Megalane is still out there. Personally, I think it's hard to miss a 7 meter 1 ton lizard, so I think it's gone for good. Anyways, we've reached the end of the video, and I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure you all like, subscribe, and comment below, as it helps a bunch with the channel growth. I'll catch you on the next video, see ya.